good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Um, we thank God for who he is Amen. And, and what he's done. As we come in for this, this, this last Sunday, fifth Sunday um, of May. And so as our Sunday school lesson, last one for the quarter. So, again, we just thank God for, for being who he is. Um, we're stepping in today to... Uh, to uh, we're going to facilitate the Sunday school lesson, and today our lesson will be uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh. Paul's thorn in the flesh, and I'll reference um, a text. This one's come out of the, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. If everyone can see, see at, at home. We'll go ahead and, and just talk about the golden text today. It's second out of Second Corinthians uh, 12, verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities and reproaches and necessaries and persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong, which is really the theme too. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and just go to the throne of grace. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Heavenly yes. Father, give you all honor and praise, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, that is yes. not cliche, but mm. the truth coming from the heart, Heavenly Father. For you are the awesome, Heavenly Father, the Alpha and the Omega, That's Heavenly right. Father. So beginning and the end, it starts and starts with you, Heavenly Ooh. Father. So we just thank you, Heavenly Father, we go this morning and talk about <clears throat> Paul, like the Apostle Paul's experience, Heavenly Father, and also and using it, Heavenly Father, as a, as a guideline for us, Heavenly Father, as we go through our Christian walk, Heavenly Father, knowing it's not easy as it was for Paul, Heavenly Father, who, who walked with you, dear God, but knowing that he is a, use him as a guide for us today, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. So we trust and believe that this lesson will edify everyone within the sound of my voice, dear God. Yes, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's going on? Uh, not well, but I'm here. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord, even if you got a thorn in your flesh today. Right, Brother Curtis? Yeah. <laughs> even if you got a thorn in your flesh this morning. Hallelujah. This is we start out this morning in the lesson, and we, let's, let's start out by reading the text this morning. The text being from, again, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 through 10. If I can have someone to go ahead and read, um, verses let's just break it up into just the two um, verses 1 through 5 and then verses uh, 6 through 10 again 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 5 and then someone else pick up and take us on home with verses 6 through 10 Again, one, the first, second Corinthians, one through five. Chapter 12, I'm sorry, one through five. Second Corinthians, chapter 12, one through five. King James Version. It reads as, it is not expedient for me to, for me doubtless, the glory. I would come to vision and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ for 14 years. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such as one caught up in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. God knows. How that he was caught up into the paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself would I not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he has 
what he sees me to be or hears from me. Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. And a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times mm. that he might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. May God have a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This, this, this really is broken up into three major uh, parts according to our um, lesson here from, from um, Union Gospel. And in the first breakdown is, is from Paul's vision of heaven, and then we'll go on to Paul's thorn in flesh, and lastly, Paul's cry for relief. But the first part here is broken down into, I think, four parts. And, and, and Paul's vision of heaven is a vision for Christ, and starting with um, 2 Corinthians 12 and 1. And this is from the New King James Version. It's been read, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast that I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And, and as it stated here, the Corinthians were looking for an impressive credentials, but Paul would not indulge them. In both his letters to the Corinthians, he made it evident that he boasted he would not, he would boast only for the Lord. So it is. And we'll see in the next few verses how reluctantly he is called. Paul, what, he's going to speak in the third person about a, a man going to the third heaven. Mm -hmm. Not, and, we, and we know, too, that as he goes on, it, it is Paul. But how he takes the third third person. Some of that, I think, is, is, is a little humility for his audience. And not to know, and, and part of that boasting to think he's above anyone else. But he did have a, a special, you know, he was called by, by Jesus himself. So his, his, and what he was dealing with, and others around him, other Jews, that he was careful and sensitive in his letter. As we've stated, um, and Pastor stated too, this is a, a, a more personal letter. This may maybe the most personal letter out of all Paul's writings, because he's defending himself, all the stuff that's going on, he's being attacked, you know, and this letter was, was delivered by, by Timothy, right? I believe it's Timothy who delivered this letter. So. Here it is, and he talked about coming to see them again. So here it is. He's trying to deal with these issues, but he's also trying to make sure that people know he is who he say he is. And um, but he's not boasting about that. So here it is. He, he is it's not profitable for me to boast. And I, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So he could boast, but he but he won't. Any comments so far? If they're not, then we'll, we'll go to right to the first practical point. When God leads believers to boast, it is for his glory, not their own. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a practical point. When God leads believers to boast, it is for his glory and not his own. Um, I made a presentation to a church earlier this week, and, and I was reading scripture. And, and we, this is one of the lessons before. One of the members said, well, you're trying to replace the minister, the pastor. I say, no, I'm an ambassador for Christ, just like we all are. I'm not trying to boast. We just talk about the work. Oh, we what? We all, remember, we've had a lesson before. We're all ambassadors for Christ. But it might boast for any glory. We don't take that. We boast because of the glory of, of the Lord <clears throat> and always trying to give him the glory, not by our own for his. And, of course, we are those those those, messages, those representatives, right? right. And so we, we, we boast not for ourselves, but we boast for him. Mm -hmm. We boast for him. Anybody? Okay. Let's go on to the second second part here. Paul's vision of heaven. This we get caught up in the first part still is being caught up by Christ. Woo! Being caught up by Christ. Again, this is um, again from, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know. So here it is, and, and again, everyone uh, pretty much is, 
is, is ascertained. This is Paul. Whether in the body or out, I do not know. Or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. What I, what I see from Paul is whether he was in or out is, is important, but it's not important. Right. The thing is, God knows. Mm -hmm. Whether he knows or realizes or not, God knows. Such a one caught up in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. The third heaven. What is anyone's assessment of the third heaven? What, what, what are your thoughts on the third heaven? Uh, where God resides. Where God resides. Where God resides. Right. Pass, and, and so we, we, when we talk about where God resides, and, and we look at here, and we talk about at that time, you, you talk about the three heavens. The, it was common to speak of three heavens. The first is the atmosphere where the birds fly. We, we talk about the sky, right? Right. And, um, um, and then the second was the place of the sun, basically the Earth's atmosphere up. And then beyond that, you talk about the celestial, celestial um, um, objects, the stars, the moon, those beyond the Earth from what they could see at that time. They considered that the second heaven. And then as, as, as Brother Curtis just said, we're, we're the third is where God dwells, where God resides. Mm -hmm. that's, that's considered where, where he is. And, and that leads on to we know that, that, that that's the place, and he goes on to describe it. And we do too, and it was interesting here, we, we all know it, we pretty much talk as kids, that we get a little more for scripture, the detail to talk about what heaven is. We get a glimpse into what heaven is through Paul right here. And, and what's going on and what we can expect. There is somewhere beyond where we are today. Right. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, you know, the buck doesn't stop here, mm -hmm. <laughs> here on earth. Um, any comments or anything before I go on? Uh, yes. I just want to just mention about the visions and, and um, the revelations. Okay. Because Paul, in, in a roundabout way, he's still referring to the other apostles. Yeah. And not only the other apostles, but the Corinthian Christians, how they, what they thought of themselves. Mm. You know, that they were super spiritual. Or they were, you know, super, you know, oh, yeah. they were uh, the, the cream of the crop. Yeah. So they prided themselves on the visions and the revelations. Yeah. And so Paul is saying that that I got a vision and a revelation that I don't have to boast about. And right. then that's what he was referring to when he says, whether in the body, out of the body, mm -hmm. God knows. God knows. So God is the one that's going to verify the fact that that. I had this vision and this revelation. Right, right. And so, but it, it, it puzzles me, or well, not puzzles, but 14 years, how he, we talk about him being humble, right? Mm -hmm. That he kept this to himself for 14 years. Yeah. That he had this vision and this revelation, that he had this experience with God and didn't say a word about it until until now. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I agree. One thing, too, it, it now is, is sometimes we all, have experiences, right? And we don't say, may not say anything about it until the situation warrants us saying something about it because of that experience. So we all as Christians, right, when we go through, we all do just that. I, and I think excellent point that's because when we get to a point, you know, we, we're there, then we, we, this is the time when we say something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, 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 and when his relationship and with, with Christians, and it's something how the Holy Spirit, it, it does that now 14 years. Now, this is his remembrance, but the Holy Spirit, at this time, this is the time for him to... I tell you, it's a lot of irony in that. Uh, when Peter went to the Saturnian house, and uh, the Holy Spirit fell upon the Saturnian in his household, mm -hmm. and Peter ate, and he's, you know, fellowship with you guys. But it took him 14 years, and he stood up for Paul before he rehearsed that again mm -hmm. and said hold on Peter stood up yeah. and rise and said after 14 years hey that wasn't the time you know guys know it, I think it was about 14 years mm -hmm. that, when Paul was bringing the church into fruition the yeah. body the you're talking about the Jerusalem council the Jerusalem council yeah. mm -hmm. the Jerusalem council yeah so it's it's a and at that time he said 
because he was struggling too, you know, yeah. didn't mean it and others too. So he somewhat verified, uh, somewhat um, was, was witness for, for well, Paul. Yeah, but like you were saying, in a period of time, it, it, sometimes uh, time passes by before God brings back to our remembrance yeah. what he has done in our life mm -hmm. to cause us to stand up oh, and man. speak now. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful. But it, it, is, it is that time. And then something like this, the third heaven, is he, is, 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 is we talk about the glory of Christ and, and, and what, what he saw and what he did in the, in the third heaven. And so the, the glory of Christ, the, the, um, the pro prohibition may have been some, may have been directed from God, but there is also an aspect of human language, simply like the words and the, the um, sounds of speech of heaven. That's just, just talking about here, the speech of heaven. And so when, as I know in, in verse three and four, such a man, whether in, in, in the body or out of body, I do not know, God knows how he was caught up in paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful to man to other. And I'm gonna come back to paradise, but the inexpressible words, that lawful for man to to other. There there are situations where you just you just you just can't describe you you know what's going on the, the magnitude of what's going on. He just he just couldn't describe either. He 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 decided not to because they couldn't handle it, or he it's just difficult for him to describe. And I've had that situation. Some things happen before. You, you just you just don't have the words to describe certain situations. And I, in, in, in the glory of Christ, that's what that is, is, is dealing with, which is not lawful for man to other, which is not lawful for the man to, it may be sacred too. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it's, it's, it's sacred. And so we know, for example, that we say um, God's name is Yahweh. But we really don't know what God's name is because it was so sacred for years. Those, those, the, the Hebrews forgot, you know, for generations they wouldn't say it. So after a period of time, <laughs> people are dying out. They forgot how to say it. And so, you know, we, we see what YHWH, which we, you know, with, with no vowels and then the English language we put vowels in, but the Hebrew and the vowels. And so you, you you come up with Yahweh. But we really don't know how what you know what his name is because they forgot. Because they hadn't used it. So because it was so sacred, they felt it was so sacred they wouldn't use it. So the, the, so we know, especially in the Old Testament here, being sacred is, 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 is so important, it is, is key. Um, but let me, let me go back here and, and talk about paradise. Paradise. Before I read that, what is everyone's version of paradise? Do not eat from one example. Paradise. There, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything, anything you desire, paradise. <laughs> and, and you just get such a, and, and, yeah. and no other one can hear what Dick said. It's just a, you know, it, it's just that place. You, know, you just it's feel, whew, yeah. oh yeah. man, it's, it's so gorgeous. It's just that peace. The presence of the Lord, where the Lord is. Yeah, like, like the third heaven. Yeah, that's third heaven. Like a third, like third heaven. There you go. Wherever he dwells. Wherever he dwells. Hallelujah. We want to be there, right? And I looked up uh, uh, the Persian definition for paradise was uh, an enclosed, luxurious garden often found among royalty in the ancient world. In the ancient so, world. Yeah. So it was a, 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 luxury, a luxurious place. That was set aside for royalty, and God yeah. declares that we are royal, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a royal priesthood. So he, he, paradise is a place where, where he dwells, but also a place that he's prepared for us. Amen, amen. And and, and, and two, if, if I may add two, in the Septuagint, when the writers of the, which is the Greek translation of Hebrew Bible, when they went and they did that, they, they pulled the, they pulled it from. We just saw uh, in the, the Persians. Mm -hmm. That's that's they, that's the word they use when they interpret for paradise. They put the put the Persian word, and so it literally means part a garden, which is which is what Pastor was saying. The, the, the um, Persian version, the Septuagint also used 
Paradisos. And someone may be pronounced that better than I just did. But anyway, uh, for the Garden of Eden. And, and Vega Center, Garden of Eden. Yeah. And, 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 and later Jewish thought paradise is a place where the righteous dead and show, which is a place of the, un, you know, people are dead, um, unliving. Jesus perhaps alluded to this idea in the story of Lazarus mm -hmm. to Abraham, right? That when he, you know, by Lazarus, he, he could not. The tongue was hard to the touch, and, and, and it's a place the guy was, uh, was, was being tortured, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and, and so they, they helped him, but there was no, you, you, you can't, that's, they did, that's right, you got that gulf there, but he could see, but you can't, he could see everybody else and thought he want to warn him, but, but not, but can't. But, but his, um, but the poor man, where he was, uh, with Lazarus, he's sitting there, you know, he, he was chilling, <laughs> everything was, he was comfortable. And in, that, um, in Revelation, when the, when the fall of man came about, when Eden was separated, he set up that same gulf up there and got cherubim's garden that that paradise yep. area that yep. man can't enter into no more. That's right. Without the, going through the throne. And, and and that's something. I'm glad you said that too. That and this is kind of a sidebar. I'm going to get back 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 on the lesson. Mm -hmm. That once we go. And we're there, you know. People saying, you know, do all these seances and the, the, the ghosts, you know, um, um, and and you know, the and, you know, it's been this is addressing the Old Testament. The, the sorcerers are, are you know, the witch of Endor, you know, talking to the dead. Divination, none of that. None of that. You know, God allowed it to happen right then, right? Uh -huh. And you know, the witch in He just allowed it. But that none of that that that's all, you know, far. That's why they were. <laughs> You know, they were stoned to death, right? Yeah. In the Old Testament. So, but the shows today that you see today and what's going on today, it's all a, just what it is. It, it's a show. But, but back to paradise, didn't Jesus, when he was on the cross in, in one of the seats mm -hmm. that time? Right. What, well, how did he put it? Uh, Answer this day, you will be with me. That's what Jesus told him. That's right. Mm -hmm. in, paradise. in paradise, that's right. Because, because that Jesus believed it, believed in because what he died of him, that's right? That's right. Yeah. And and that's what people commonly call that a deathbed, you know. Confession. 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 You know. It's because he was he's getting ready to go. Um and matter of fact, when Jesus and when Jesus spoke to the thief on the cross. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, <thank> <laughs> He promised no, that's good. <laughs> he promised him the day that we'd be with him in paradise yeah. and pleasant grace <laughs> among the righteous. There you go. You read my notes, right? I didn't even appreciate you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go to the second practical point. God used both the highs and the lows in our lives, in our ministry, to others. High and low. When you're down, you still per profess. Yeah. You still, in our, in our weakness, we still give God the glory. Is that easy to do? Raise your hand. It, it, no, it's not. Oh, you're about to raise it? Y'all thought you about to raise your hand because it's easy <laughs> I, to do. I mean, I'm one who, I mean, most of you guys, I mean, been around me long enough <laughs> yeah. to know I'm not ashamed to to view my, uh, to pronounce what I. You know from book. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, my weaknesses mm -hmm. and the strongholds that have been put in my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes strongholds can be placed in your life in your own home. That can oh, cause you to fall weak. It's oh, cause you to question your ministry as you go about. Yeah. And I understand these things. Yeah, you know. Aspect. And, and, and what did Jesus say in paraphrasing um, things in Matthew that for, for man anyway, if the enemy wants to come into your house, was he asked if he's to bind the, the man first, strong man right. first. And, he, man. and then he could take pretty much take over. Yeah. So and, and we get weak in our homes at times too, right? Uh -huh. But we still cannot let let them come in. Yes. And how do we do that? By professing or giving God all the glory, you know, as we go on. Pastor. Yeah, I, I wanted to, uh, you can back up. Uh, Paul talked about and heard inexpressible words. So he said, which a man cannot utter. So Paul did not say he saw anything. He's not talking about what he saw. He's talking about what he heard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the word. Mm -hmm. So Paul was saying, 
that I can't even describe to you. I'm not even going to attempt to describe to you what I saw. Mm -hmm. I can't even utter the things that I heard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's important for us to look at that too, that, that inexpressible words, that he heard inexpressible words, which is unlawful for a man to utter. So he couldn't even repeat the things that he heard. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so, and and, and and I think, too, that that, that whole experience, because he's talking in the, in the third, third person, 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 too, is a matter of the humility. And I think that this, this he could have gone on, mm -hmm. but he didn't because he didn't want to put the attention on him. He hit this, and then he moved on. Right. It, 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 when I was reading this and, and preparing for the day, I, I, he didn't spend a whole lot of time because, you know, in, and we're going because in chapter 11 mm -hmm. in 2 Corinthians, he talked about all those things he went through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I talk about it a little later. He talked about those things. He, he gave a summary of everything he went through. So it's, 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 it's kind of paraphrasable, like, like Lesson said, for, for the thorn in the flesh. This is a, 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 a preface for the thorn in the flesh so that he can go ahead and let them know that um, in, 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 in the second part, right for his yeah. thorn in his flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and about his boasting, and back to the past when he said those expressive mm -hmm. words, talking about his boasting that he, he pulled up because he didn't want to seem like he was boasting. Yeah, right. And, um, and, and that's what's going on. This, this references it's, uh, to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 5 and 6. And I'm going to go ahead and, and, and read the scripture again of such a one I will boast. Yet of myself I will not boast, mm -hmm. except my own infirmities. You just talked about that a little, you know. So, for though I might desire to boast, and we do, you know, let's, let's face it, we do sometimes. How many of you say you don't? I mean, if you I, don't, raise your hand. Look what I've done. Yeah, that, look what I've done. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you actually do, but what Paul says too, except you may desire to do it. You see all them I wills there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. That's right. <laughs> But though I may desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I speak the truth. But I refrain. What does refrain mean? Hold back. Hold him back. Yeah. Or hold back. Yeah. Lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me or to be or hears from me. Yeah. Remember the lesson before that, that, that Pastor talked last week in, in Sunday school. We were talking about that Paul was not a, a person, you know, with his appearance. They already kind of, um, yeah, he, he, he was nothing to, to look at, you know, to say this is a guy to do it. So, and, and I know he, he has to know that, so he really is, is pulling back. The kind of, you know, I know I, I want to, I could show off because of what you think of my appearance and who I am anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to refrain mm -hmm. because your human nature well, want you to do it. Well, he's talking about me. I can't do this. Well, I got to jump in front and say, I can't. <laughs> exactly. That's the trick of the enemy. want to try to. And really getting in front of God. Mm -hmm. and, and you hear it many times, right? And it's not for, for anyone in the room, anything like that. But I've been in, in many services and in, in many messages. Um, the prayer, um, Lord, put me behind the cross. <laughs> and then as soon as you finish the prayer, the cross, <laughs> the cross, they, they switch places. So, you know, the hump, the humility is, and, and, and that's been common from, from, from my experience that you hear the intro is, Lord, you know, let me stand behind the cross, the cross behind me, and the next thing you know, it's, it's, it's not. So the thing is the humility of, of, of being that. Um, and for though I may desire to boast, I want. Practical point three, and, and, and you may see me push through here a little more because I'm going to put emphasis on the end of this lesson because this, again, is just the preface leading up. But the third practical point, God's goodness says for God's goodness speaks for itself without any need to boast, mm -hmm. without any need. We, we don't have to. Any comments there? I think that's pretty much get, get it. Paul's humility for the thorn, thorn in the flesh. Much debate has been aired as to what exactly the thorn was. But Paul does not tell us. 
chapter, I mean, excuse me, verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I exalt above measure. And, and when we, we, let's talk about that. There simply is no way to know when we follow the intentions of this text, it is much more important to understand the thorn's purpose than to determine exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. It's the purpose. And I want to make sure I put that out front first before we go here. Thorn, right, means a splinter state of something pointing. Flesh can refer to the body or to a simple way. I got this. Paul a lot right, likes about flesh, but what, is, what, what does he also refer to the count at? What, what is the... the, the uh, what is the adversary of flesh? I mean, excuse me. What is the opposite of flesh in, Paul, in, in Paul's writings? The spirit. The spirit. Yeah. We talk about the flesh and the spirit. Some say it may be an intangible, something you can't see, but for my, my reason, this may be wrong. This, this is not coming from a, a commentary thing. When Paul's talking about something in the spirit, he'll say it. Yeah, Romans 7. Yeah, some, he's going he's gonna to say it. Yeah, and, and so... You look at, if he's talking about the Spirit, and, and in Galatians, right, you got the, the fruits of the Spirit, and just before he's talking about the fruits of the, yeah. the, the flesh. Yeah. So, in this case, I do believe it, it is a physical. In Romans 7, he spoke of his personal encounter mm -hmm. with this physicality, with this fleshly uh, weakness that he had. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and also... Um, to uh, Romans 7, and, and uh, he talks a little bit too here before in, in, in 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I think it's 11, 11 before. Yeah, and so he, he also kind of a build, it's kind of a backdrop here. But also, just like just said, most commentators interpret as a, a physical element. And somebody look up Galatians 4 and 15 for me, please. The big, um, the big letters and stuff. Pardon me? Um, yes, I. I was thinking that's when he wrote these this letter with the Lord's words. So thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And so mm -hmm. that, that's that's correct. And many suggest that it was our troubles on, on the basis of, yeah. of of Galatians four and fifteen. It, it reads like this: Well, then, uh, where's then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if I had been, if they had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. That's wrong. That's on Galatians 4.15. 4.15. Mm -hmm. Blessing of the word. And, and, and that's what some speculate. This game is all speculation that that may have happened because, you know, he, he, he's, he's been through some stuff. Um, the scripture also referring to a messenger of Satan. God permitted Satan to afflict Paul as he did Job. Mm -hmm. You, you know, lying with afflicted, a messenger of, of Satan. And um, sometimes we um, we can be a messenger of, of Satan and get caught up in ourselves and our action toward anybody else, too. Mm -hmm. This may have been a person that we, we, we don't know. It's, it's God and the way he does it. I say that because we all remember Peter, right? What, what did Jesus tell Peter? Satan, what? Get thee behind me, mm -hmm. you know. At that time, so you know when he when he was with, and I'm gonna correct, washing the feet, right? He says, "Satan, get thee behind me." He's talking about washing his feet. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a, a situation of messenger of Satan. We don't don't know, but he did whatever it was, and it was an attack, and God allowed it. Mm -hmm. And the scripture, you remember, reading it, buffet. I mean, that this message of Satan. I mean, it, it means to strike with a fist. Paul was tor tormented, consistent discomfort. I forgot my, my parentheses there, but consistent. And I look, <laughs> I like buffets. I know you like buffets. You know? <laughs> and when you do, you can keep going back, right? Yeah. It's going. My, 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 my brother, and he may look at this one day, so he'd laugh. Uh, when he was, he's playing football at West Carolina University in North Carolina, and he's a big guy there, and he was, he was huge. Um, and we went to a buffet in Sumter, South Carolina. Boy, the um, lady walked up. He kept going back, kept going back. He, he was hurting him. He was torn. 
to the point that they almost said, you got, you got to leave, you know? So I, I mean, and, and that's crazy, it just came to mind about this buffet. So Paul, this is constant, you know? And just constant hurting him. Yeah, that's right. And he wouldn't leave. He wouldn't leave, and he wouldn't leave. And, and God asked him to move the thorn of and he wouldn't, you know? So, you know, I just think about that buffet. That's just kind of a side part. Any other comments? Because I like buffets. I'm getting like pastor now, pastor be, be preaching. Let me get you a story. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my. <laughs> good, good story. <laughs> Paul's storm was so painful, a painful, humiliating experience given to prevent pride. Mm. Yeah. Keep you humble. Yeah, keep you humble. Yeah. Because we know as we go on the next practical point, without trials, believers would, believers would forget to rely on God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's right. You go to enough buffet, you start to <laughs> have a tendency to forget. Forget. You know. That's right. Exactly what's going on. What's going on. That's right. You got to right. govern your body when yeah. you have that buffet. Yeah, the buffet. <laughs> and people, the tendency that, that 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 constant torment is just a reminder. It causes you to run. That's right. That's right. But let's move on to Paul's cry for relief. This is the third part. This is in reference to uh, chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. And this is when we started to bring it home. I tell you, I want to get through and, and spend the time on, on, the, on the last part of this. And, and this is what this is the meat of this lesson this morning. Paul pleads for help, and we've already talked about it. Son, verse eight. Concerning this thing, what is this thing? The thorn. The thorn. The thorn. Mm -hmm. I pleaded, pleaded. Taking the word, but I pleaded. What does that mean? I almost begged, right? Mm -hmm. I begged God. <clears throat> with the Lord three times. And what does three mean? Huh. I gotta go I'm look it up. I, I forgot what three. Uh, what, what's the three? What's, what's three? I gotta look it up again. I forgot. The, uh, the three, the num the the the, the um, importance of the number three. No, 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 no. I'm gonna look it up before, but the importance of, and I, I meant to do it again, because you know numbers have the trinity. That, that mean, yeah, the trinity, the three, but, but it's, it's a word for us. Yeah, so that, and, and I looked that up. I, I forgot, and I, and I was embarrassed, and I should have. Um, and said I would and got distracted. Um, three times that he made a par for me. So he pleaded with God three times to par for me. But for God, but God wouldn't. According to the, um, the, the author of the, of the lesson here, Paul knew that he could not relieve himself from this problem. He could not simply put pull the thorn out of his flesh and obtain relief. It would not go away. He pleaded with him three times to remove it. That's that's some things, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I got certain things that, that, that have happened to me, and, and one thing I didn't know was it had happened. You know, you pray and ask God to, to get it, you know, but it's, 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 it's still there. Did God answer my prayer? Yes. He just said no. Yeah, not now. That's right. And, and I think it's uh, interesting that that um, Paul did exactly what he's been teaching others to do. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't like he did mm -hmm. something wrong. Mm -hmm. He did exactly what he's been telling other people yeah. to do. He prayed. He said, I went to God three times about this thing. Right. And so what happens when, when we go to God about something and the circumstances don't change? And so Paul is saying that, and, and I, you, I'm sure you're going to get to it. That's the reason why he can glory in his infirmities. His infirmities. Because he realizes it's something that God was doing to help him. That's right. That's right. And, and not only that, and he's saying this for his experience too, like he did earlier. Based on his experience, this is what I'm going. And here I am teaching you, son. Um, all you need is the verse. You need it on verse 9. All you need is the verse. Oh, yeah. All you, all, all, all you, you just, just need, need his grace. And so he's built up that, and, and, and like Pastor saying, now, now this is Paul, and he went three times on the road to Damascus, and, and, and it was called, but still, didn't remove it from him. And in our trials, too, practical point, persistent prayer dominates, excuse me, demonstrates faith in the midst of trials. Persistent prayer. Now, that, that, that is true. I don't know how much that applies really to what we're talking about here, but obviously, and we know that persistent prayer, we do that. But when we are weak, we continue, we've gone through, continue to pray. 
And, um, and we as mature Christians, and we, we try to work to it, persistent prayer. Regardless of what's going on in our life, is good or bad, we still need to be persistent in prayer. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. <laughs> Keep knocking. Mm -hmm. you, you must don't feel well, uh, Brother Curtis, because I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I'm going back to uh, Luke when, uh, when the, you got a stranger coming in and That's right. you don't have no bread for your for your visitor and you go to your neighbor's house and he's in the bed. That's and right. Persistent knocking. Persistent. And you Persistent. Go to, That's right. To, to, the, to the woman who goes to the, the hard right. king, he's like, Mitch, I wish you That's give right. her what she wants. Yeah. Because right. she continues. She's continuing. Bugging me. That's bugging right. me. Stop yeah, bugging me. Stop 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 you know, and, and, and that particular one about, about the door, um, I've, I've had to share it with my wife several times that, you know, you just keep, you just keep going that, you know, here it is, the neighbor's there, and, 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 and keep going that, just, just leave, here it is, leave me alone, <laughs> here it is. I don't think God takes it, but, but here it is. He wants us to continue because showing that faith. Because he's going to continue. In Revelation, you say he stands at the door knocking. Knocking. Himself. Yeah. 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 We, we, and, and, that's, and that's with faith. That, all those, those situations, both of them in yeah. Scripture, those individuals had faith. faith. <clears throat> Going on to, and, and, and back to what Rolando was alluding to, just God, and this we spend most of the time on, Paul's cry for, for, for relief. Paul's cry for relief. Woo. B, God answered. We're talking about 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and 10. And he said to me, here you go, Rolando, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast, boast about my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And here's our golden text from earlier. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Anybody got any comments so we really dig into this? Uh, my grace is sufficient. It's interesting how God changed Paul's focus mm -hmm. to the grace, not the infirmity. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, look, because, uh, you know, Paul was saying, hey, I need some relief from this, uh, what I'm getting. I'm being punched, right? Yeah. I'm being buffed. Terminate, torment. And, and, and so God is saying, through all of that, my grace is what's going to mm -hmm. sustain you. Mm -hmm. So he, he redirected his focus. Yeah. Yeah, I like what Pastor Rick said. And also, if you look at it too, uh, God doesn't want you to focus on your position, focus on the mission. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. Let me write that down now. Can I take credit for that? That's fine. <laughs> 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 uh, write it down, take credit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, you know, just uh, taking pleasure. You know, like I say, uh, we all go through, and we got to know how to. Uh, Rejoice in those times. Oh, I I wasn't a perfect example this whole weekend at my house, rejoicing in these infirmities and these weaknesses that uh, have come about, and um, I allowed the reproaches to cause me to sh you know buckle a little bit. Okay. But knowing that you know the pleasure of the Lord is with me all the time, so I, therefore I'm going to continue to fight the good fight. Mm -hmm. Fight this good fight. This this is not. Uh, Corner. This thing is spiritual. Yeah. Ways yeah. in heavenly places. Yeah. See, someone, and I, I know these things. I know these things. As long as you know these things, it's going to be a, a continuous battle for your soul, for the wicked one. So That's therefore, right. you got to stay on God. Uh, always, always. Because yeah. uh, yeah. we, we all, we all fall short. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all do. And, and those who said it don't, you know, they're, they're yeah. lying. Mm -hmm. You know, but we all fall short. Let's pass. No. I will gladly rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. There's a reward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when we when we uh, embrace God's grace, I mean, that's something we don't deserve. He gives it to us. Right. 
the power, actually the power of Christ rests upon you. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad Pastor, you know, I was just thinking on that on my way here about the war. And now I, I, I was lamenting the fact that, wow, I'm, I'm just hand stubble now. You hear what I'm saying? I'm hand, just hand, hand stubble. stubble. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and then I'm after um, the precious stones and the, the, the gold and the silver, mm -hmm. you know, so I could be of a great use when I enter into the kingdom of God. But right now, with these earthly things and with the um, secular things that you battle with, it could cause you to lose reward along the way. And that's what I'm talking about, the reward thing. Well, and, and the thing is, that, and we work, and, and, and Pastor talked about it in one of his lessons, Sunday school lessons, before we gained, we got the, re the re rewards. And that's why we talk about ministry, because we, we're talking about a whole letter. That yeah. Paul wrote to, to yeah. people in Corinth. And you notice toward the end, and, and one thing I like about Paul, it, it's, it's a long line I, I like about Paul. And you know, this is this was probably about um, 56 AD, he wrote this around yeah. that time. Um, and when you think and then and when these are ancient people, but these people still nothing's new under the sun. They they still dealing with the same stuff yeah. that we deal with today. And he's addressing this. In his letters, I, and, and I got a better sense really doing this, the way he lays out his letters and the way he approaches mm -hmm. things in his letters, because they didn't have the telephone to pick up to discuss it, but he had it to, to, to lay it out this, this way because of the issues that we have. He's writing to these people. It, it all it applies mm -hmm. to us. And so the grace will be today. Jesus knew this too. God, when he went to the cross, it's for grace because those times we, we do have that. Yeah, yeah. We, we got away, and then we're earning as we go, right? Mm -hmm. We we can't go back and do anything. No. All we can do is what we got and, and move forward. The issue is, I think the most dangerous thing we do is to fall away, to have the apostasy. Yeah. When we completely fall, that's the that's the danger. When mm -hmm. you know it, you know the truth, and, and, and the second piece say, you, you know, um, it's worse, and I'm paraphrasing, and, and I think it's right. To return back to the Yeah, to return, to return back. back it's it's better that you have never that's known the truth. Oh, the Proverbs. That's the Proverbs 3 and but, but Peter addressed to it's better for you to have never known the truth, and once you get the truth, then yeah. you fall away, then you go away yeah, from it. Yeah. It's better to be naive, and once you know, you're responsible. Yeah, that's falling right. back into bondage, Pete, Peter was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, falling back. You, I mean, bondage. once you know it, of apostasy falling, because remember, and, 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 and Paul's dealing with some of this too. He, he's dealing with the, um, 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 we talk about the apologetics. Mm -hmm. He's defending the gospel through all this too because he's having to address this because there are other people, he said, the, the Jews and, and, and the Judaizers or whatever. And, 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 and you were saying earlier, Pastor, in the first part, what came to mind, I forgot, is the Gnostics. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with people who think there's, mm -hmm. they're up here. But yeah. in the mystery, you got some kind of supreme knowledge over everybody else, and he's dealing with. So Peter deals with it too, and the heresy, he's dealing with this also, yeah. and, and all that. So all this is going on, and, and to go ahead and bring this out. To say, he's not only telling you what to do, he, he's living himself. He's not only preaching this, he's, he's dealing with it too. Right. He, he, what he's doing, he's preparing us for something greater. And as you spoke of Job in the beginning, and Paul in general, when you uh, the, the comparative of both of them, Romans 1 is where not just those two are, but Paul placed the whole world in that. When after we do these things, what God would do, he's going to give us over mm -hmm. to a depraved mind, and then he's going to mm -hmm. leave us in that situation. That, that's it. We, Eventually, that's what, where we're going. Yeah, yeah. And, and what we want to do is talking about rewards. We want to make sure we get in. We, we get into that paradise where we're in the rewards so we can get. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. But, but once we've been sealed, we got to trust this too. Once you've been sealed and once you've been baptized, no one can snatch you out of his hand. No, no one. You got to mm -hmm. trust that. You got to trust. Got to trust. And faith. Have that faith. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk about Paul's infirmities, okay? And mm -hmm. and this was to spend the time with the backdrop. If someone please um, and um, could, could read... Um, Chapter 11, 24 and 30. Um, 24 through 30. Second Corinthians chapter 11, 24 through 30. It talked about some of Paul's infirmities that he talked about here. You see here, therefore gladly, I rather boast about my infirmities. Mm -hmm. Let 
things that I got going wrong with me. I'd rather boast about that. Somebody want to get that? Um, chapter 11, 24 through 30. You got it? Bring it, bring it, bring it home. Of the Jews, five times received thy forty stripes, save one. Okay. Repeat that again, brother. Of the Jews, five times received thy forty stripes, save one. Five times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five times. Yeah. Forty stripes, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, what is, I just had it and lost it. I, I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't study it. I forgot the number. If you, you, Paul was, at one time, they were striking him, but he said he was Jew. Jew. Can't strike him over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You strike him what, what, 40 times. It's, it's, it's 39, right? It's the max. Yeah. yeah, the 39 is the max, and they struck him 40 times. And he had to tell him, I'm a, I'm a uh, Benjamin. I mean, right. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, you know? Right. So, so you know, he, he had that, you know, he was, so, but anyway, go on. So he was, he been struck. He struck against the law, what they were supposed to do, okay. their law. Mm -hmm. Twice, three times, was I beaten with rods. Ooh, how many times? Three times. Three times, beaten with rods. So he's been struck. Five times, forty times. I mean, I mean, beaten, whipped, and then he struck with rods right. too. Yeah. Now that's an addition, right? This is. Yeah. This addition. is compiling. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, once was I stoned. Okay. He was stoned. And Remember, he was stoned to, to death. I mean, yeah. they thought he was dead. Yeah. That's when. Yeah. 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 He thought he, you go to Acts. He thought he was that, dead. That's when he went into the third. Yeah. That's and, right. And, and, okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, and um, three times I suffered shipwreck, a <laughs> night and a day. I have been in the deep. And that was after all, after, yeah. after all, you know, <laughs> that he was, he was struck, then he was uh, beaten with a rod. <laughs> stone. <laughs> stone. And then after that, he shipped yeah, shipwrecked. Three times. He was left to death. He was left to be dead many times. Many times, okay. In journey, often a pair of water and pairs of robbers and perils by my own countrymen in perils by the by the heathen, in peril of the cities, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in peril among false brothers. What is in peril? Danger. They're in peril. Danger. Right. He's, he's, in, he's in danger. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, he had all these threats and threw it off. Threw it off. All of those infirmities. That's why I was saying earlier, some things is his eyesight, but he, he's, he's been, he's, he's gone through all that, mm -hmm. you know. I have a few injuries. I mean, I just found that I got um, my little, I didn't know I had it. I got problems with, <laughs> with, with, uh, um, with the lumbar, whatever it is. Right on the spine. I didn't know that. For you. And they say it's an old injury. So here it is. You got all this stuff. I, I wonder why when I bend down deep, my back hurting a little bit. I'm not screaming yet, but uh, <laughs> that pain, that pain, yeah. Call him out in front of everybody. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that back pain, but that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's an infirmity. Yeah. That's an infirmity, isn't it, D? Yes, sir. It's an infirmity. So you think about, you think about all those things he went through, and he still, and that's you know, Thorne's still going to talk about the weakness. Let's let's get to, God wants His people to minister in His power, but not their own strength. Mm -hmm. Back to you saying earlier, right, Pastor? You know, in His weakness, you know, showing His grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That wisdom. Can anyone think of a, your own personal situation where you've just been, you, you, you alluded to a little um, earlier, that you get weak? And there's certain things and there's certain triggers that even when you are weak, that if I got a physical ailment, I don't want nobody to bother me. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's, that's, that's me. I want to seek my wife to tell you, put me in the room by myself to stay away because I don't want to. And, and this is something I'm growing to. So good for me is a lesson that it, it's, it's, we're all work in progress. I know I am. And this part of it, for when those situations happen, I got to grow out of that. Yes. And you got to come to a realization that our biggest threat comes from the inside to begin with. Because your, your sickness is going to come from inside the body. Mm -hmm. So we have, to be, we have to cultivate that thing that's in us. We have to tend and take care of that thing that we have in us family, health, those things that we can cultivate as we grow. Yeah, and, and, and definitely teach, teach it, teach it as, treat it as a temple. Yeah. Let, let me, let me, I mean, um, back up, we, yeah, we prepare to close here. Um, in talking about Paul, Paul did not 
Paul did not, um, God did not remove Paul's infirmities, right? Or his, right. His, his storm. Paul needed grace. Not grace to deliver him from his affliction, but grace to continue in spite of, as you said earlier, Brother Curtis. But he would, he would get greater joy. And this is, this is powerful right here. Paul says he would get greater, greater, God would get greater glory by using Paul in spite of his storm than removing it altogether. Because you were able to overcome despite what was going on with you. You still give him the glory. God, it, when things are going hunky-dory, um, it's, it's, it's easy to say, oh, thank, thank you, God. But when things are going bad, sometimes you, people, you, know, you blame somebody else or whatever. What, what, do you, what do you say? You know, so God gets the glory, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're down, God gets that glory. Paul learned a great lesson and contentment from the thorn in his flesh. He learned to boast in his weakness instead of his strength because, because it was his weakness that magnified the power of God in his life. Because yes. it magnified the power of God in his life. Our last practical point. God's light shines brightest in a believer when his own light is, is most faint. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. God should be bright. Amen. God should be bright when, 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 it's, uh, when it's the most faint. So when that, then that light, when, when our light starts to fade a little bit, you put a little God, put, put God's light on that. <laughs> Any comment, anything about, um, anybody got anything about the lesson? Um, and, and we just know that there's a whole lot going on in our lives too. And I tell you what, when, when you study the word, and, and I don't know if, go ahead and um, we close out here. As we studied, studied the word and we talked about it, that one thing you see before, is there, but then when you, you really dig into it, you see something else. You get you get more out of it. And I like to use the word exegesis. Ex exegesis, okay, exegesis. And I, I say that a lot, but does anyone know what that means, Ex exegesis? When, you, when you're exegeting the text, like today in culture, and I think it's important when we read the word and we exegese the text, that we take what Paul was doing here and we apply, we take out what we do, and, and, and this is what we're going to take out of this in our culture and how we use it today. And how, how, how we use it today. Again, there's no internet, no cars, no YouTube, <laughs> no Facebook, none of that to get it out. Okay? The word out. He used a letter that we take what we see here in that and we still apply that life again. You said earlier about rewards and, and, and past the grace, and that's what we deal with today. Some people think scripture is an ancient book. I mean, it just, the, the, the Bible is so ancient, it doesn't apply. No, there's nothing new under the sun. And it does apply. Anyone who thinks that, yes. And yes, and you got to know that, yes, yeah, ancient, and it was written a day, but we still got some unfinished business in here that haven't been fulfilled yet. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. therefore, not ancient, it's present. Oh, it's, it's, it's present. And so we, 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 we keep that in mind as we go. And, and I'm going to close out with one other story. One last story. And we're going to close out. I think I covered everything. One other story. This um, um, lady um, was telling me that this, this guy, you know, he, he knew the Lord. And his best friend had, had died. They were avid golfers. And then he got sick. You know, they, they both, both love, love, love the Lord. And when he got sick, um, um, I think he had a heart attack, aneurysms, or something. But he was he was out for a little. I think he had a, a coma, or something from the line. I mean, I have the story exactly right. But he was out for a minute. But when he said he left, he went to he, you know, he's in paradise. You know, he he, he was gone. Mm -hmm. But then they were, he was able to be revived. But he said when he told the story was was God told him that that when he was gone. That, that, you know, th this is where he's coming, and it felt good. And then God said, well, um, um, well, you're not ready for me yet. He, he, he asked and said, no, no, I, I am ready for you. You're not going to make it. But he did send him back. Two weeks later, he was gone. Two weeks later, he was gone. But his experience that there is somewhere beyond that third heaven we talked about, that we, we all want to be, be in that third heaven. 
So there have been a lot of other stories, but it's interesting that this is some person. A lot of stories like that, that people, so those of us, and we carry on the Great Commission, you have, um, and you think, about, we want to make sure we take as many people with us as we can. We want to take as many people with us as we can through the Great Commission. Because our loved ones, you look and, you know, you can't, you're going to shake the dust off, but that's part of our job. And so here at um, a Helping Hands Ministry, we, we want to do that. Right, Pastor? Amen. You look at that vision to get people in the door, and there's a reason for that. We don't study just so we can hold on to it. We study for ourselves, but we also study because we want to go and use this and take those practical points and use those practical points. Amen? Amen. All minds are clear? This one? Okay. All right, then. Brother Curtis, you feel strong enough to, to close out this morning with prayer? Okay, we'll close it out this morning. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us this morning to come yes, together Lord. Yes, Lord. to speak about your holy name. Yes, Lord. Mm. Knowing that you have already shown great and powerful things through our Apostle Paul, who have written letters to encourage us and to strengthen us, even in our weakness as mm. we go through this day. Mm. Father, I appreciate and I thank you for Brother Miller Smith this morning, giving, giving his son. Um, Tutelage and his um, knowledge of what he had taught on this day. And Father, may you put a great blessing upon him and his family. And then as he go in through this next couple of days and weeks, that you would strengthen him as his wife and endure such yes. great turmoils and, yes, and, and bring her through in a way that only you can bring her through. Yes, so that you would Thank be, you, where you would be glorified Thank by you, he Lord. and mm. his family yes, as, as we go through these days. Yes. Father, I love you, and we yes. give you all honor and praise, thank and you. I thank you for thank this you. moment that you have given me in my weakness. You have made me strong. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank yes. You. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen